this one is really all about the IV characteristics, require practical or PAG or whatever, the Ohm's law PAG I would call it myself, um, the Ohm's law practical uh, that you need to do for your GCC. <laughs> Hi, yeah, this is Gorilla Physics, and I'm running through this, which is an OCR Gateway PAG. Okay, it's a um, OCR Gateway paper, paper one, but really this PAG is the Ohm's Law PAG, the IV characteristics PAG, which is in all of the new physics exam syllabuses, so it's useful to you if you're studying GCSE physics. It asks you to firstly to draw a circuit diagram for this experiment, so there's a mark actually for knowing the correct symbols for all of these. There's a mark for getting the voltmeter and the ammeter and the resistor and the cell all in the correct series or parallel, however they should go in the circuit. So this one should be a really simple set of marks because you should know this circuit diagram really well because you've been revising your practicals. Okay, so there's my cell. The component that I'm testing needs to go in series with the cell. And in this case, it's a resistor. And we need to measure the current, so we need an ammeter in series with that. And it needs to be in series, that is a mark there. Where do we put a voltmeter? We put voltmeters across what we are measuring. So that is my circuit diagram there. I have got a mark for all the symbols being correct. I've got a mark for the... Um, I've got two marks, really, for getting the symbols correct. I've got a mark for the cell, the resistor, and the ammeter all being in series, and I've got a mark for the voltmeter being across in parallel with whatever we are measuring. Okay, so moving on to see the student's results. This is an Ohm's law practical, so you expect them to be ohmic. So the command word is plot the results on the graph below and draw a line of best fit. So two volts for amps. 2 volts for amps you need to be accurate to half a small square by the way when you're using graphs in these new GCCs 4 is 7 6 10 and 8 14 so that is a shock straight line of best fit there is no dubiety that that should be Exactly there. So that is a straight line of best fit because we know it's going to be a ohmic resistor. Now it's not really super easy to place that, but this is the only kind of place and going through the origin where if you think well if the thing was off, then it'd have zero potential difference and zero current. We know that an ohm's law graph, an ohmic resistor, is going to be a straight line through the origin because V is proportional to I. So that's all my marks there. I've got a mark for the points being correctly plotted. Um, and that's actually two marks for correctly plotting the points and one mark for straight line of best fit and going through the origin. Use the gradient of the graph to calculate the resistance of the unknown resistor. So it actually tells you to use the gradient to calculate the resistance. So you didn't really need to remember this because just calculate the gradient. But this is using Ohm's law in its rearranged form. R is V over I. So Ohm's law you'll probably remember as V equals I R. One of the ones that you need to remember, one of the most important ones for solving circuit problems. Okay, so what is the rise over the run, basically? So here we go. Well, I'll just use as big an area of the graph as I can. 8 volts over 14 amps. Gives me... Zero point five seven. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, I uh, did actually make a deliberate error there, because I want you to be aware of something. That seems quite low. It seems quite low for any resistor I've ever used. It's never, I've never seen half ohm a resistor. Okay, maybe, maybe an individual wire might be a resistance of about half an ohm. When you look at the next question, it says the actual value is five hundred and fifty ohms. Well, that's a clue. There's something gone wrong there, isn't it? Okay, and that's because I have deliberately rushed this. And if you look closely, you can see that the current is in milliamps from the graph. So I need to do something before I actually go ahead and do this calculation, which is times 10 to the minus 3. So the voltage is 8 volts. The current is 14 milliamps. Or in other words, 
14 times 10 to the minus 3, or 0 0.001, my mistake, 0 0.014 amps. Okay, that's why it's easier to use the standard form like this. Hopefully you caught that as well. Use of the standard form button speeds you up significantly and you're less likely to make uh, orders of 10 error like this one if you are typing in times 10 to the minus three than you are by doing a conversion like this. So 571.4 blah, 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 blah. 571 is absolutely fine. Three significant figures. Let's check my rounding there. So here we've got marks for reading the numbers off correctly. Importantly, a mark for having this converted correctly. A mark for getting the right place and a mark for the final answer. So the actual value is so the actual value that is, is 550 ohms is the calculated answer with the five within the five percent manufacturing error tolerance. So this is in other words the manufacturer's um, stated value of the resistor. This is what we measured experimentally. So have they done what they've stated? Five percent possible tolerance from this and you have to explain your answer so you firstly have to work out is it and then you have to explain it well how are you going to work that out well it's like saying well what's the upper bound of this or the lower bound of that so in other words we need to work out five percent of that so how would you work out five percent of that you would just do 550 times 0 0.05 boom bang 27.5 so five percent of 550 is 27.5 ohms okay so the upper bound or the maximum possible um, of manufacturing tolerance is 550 plus 27.5 obviously the shortcut would be just to be 550 times 1.05 577.5 ohms okay well that's the maximum possible value and still being within their tolerance and you just need to explain that yes it is within as 571 is less than 577.5 ohms okay I hope that one makes sense, a pretty straightforward one really. Firstly, mark for 5% of 550. Secondly, the, the maximum possible. And lastly, yes, because it lies within that range, or yes, because it's less than 577.5. Thanks very much for watching. This is Gorilla Physics, all about you understanding more, so you get more confident, enjoy physics more, and you're gonna do better in your exams. Cheers.